Adventure Resolve, there are three different sets of color wheels. Now, not three different color wheels, three different sets of color wheels. I'm gonna try to give you an overview of the different sets of color wheels and how they are different from one another. And hopefully by the end of this, you have a better grasp of when to use one color wheel over another one. There are pros and cons to each set of color wheels. There isn't one color wheel that's better than the other set of color wheels. They just do things a little bit different. So over here, we have the primary wheels and most people are used to seeing this because this is the default area uh, when it comes to the color wheels. How color wheels work is they work off of the luminance values in an image. So the bright areas versus the dark areas. Each color wheel will manipulate either the bright area, the midtones, or the highlights. And so, yeah, that's pretty much how they work. In the primary wheels, though, we see lift, gamma, and gain. This terminology might be a little confusing when you first get into color grading, but let me quickly show you something that will make this super easy. So, obviously, the shadows are going to be the dark areas. And we have this lift over here. If we take a little look here, there's a black little dot, right? So that's the easiest way to say, okay, that's the dark one. Then we obviously have the midtones, and then we have a bright little dot there. So that's gonna be the highlights. Those controls do something specific, but I just wanted to, that made it a lot easier for me to wrap my head around it when I didn't remember the terminology there. So how, let's uh, move my camera up here. And we have my scopes here, and this is showing this image over here, right? And it'll make it a lot easier when we're manipulating these instead of just working on a whole colored image. So the lift, gamma, and gain, working on the primary wheels, there is overlap. And the overlap is there to make the image look as natural as possible when we're doing a control because there is going to be an overlap between the different zones. So if we take a look at the lift here and we take a look at our uh, scopes, we can see once I move this, we are drastically affecting the shadows. So how this image works is along the bottom is going to be the darkest and at the top is going to be the brightest. We have the left side of the image and the right side of the image and that kind of makes sense over here. So we can see the shadows area has drastically moved. The highlights didn't move at all, mid-tones moved a little bit. So we can see that there is an adjustment going across there. And the same way if I work with the highlights, it's going to go the other way as well, right? The midtones is slightly different because it's actually weighted, a lot of people don't know this, but it's actually weighted towards the shadows a little bit more uh, to preserve a lot of the highlights. For most images, this is going to be a characteristic in which is gonna be most favorable for a very natural looking image when you're grading. So if as I move this, we can see that we're weighted down here in the shadows a little bit more than if we come up here, um, the amount up here. It is still in the midtones, but it's a little more weighted towards the shadows. So that's just something to be mindful of. So this set of three is, a big thing is overlap with the primary wheels. Okay, let's just reset this. And then we have a button right here that goes over into the log wheels. The difference with the log wheels is that there is no overlap at all. Each has their own dedicated area, and when we adjust, it only adjusts that particular area and not the rest of the image. So, I move the shadows, it just moves the bottom portion. Move the midtones, it's just moving the mid area. And the highlights, it's just moving the high area, right? Now, an issue there is what if the midtones isn't where the midtones are in my shot, right? So midtones are in a different area if you're outside versus inside in a dimmer lit area. Midtones are going to be slightly different for the overall image, right? So how can we adjust one of these wheels to work in a particular area? Well, we actually have a couple of controls. So let's actually just come in here to the midtones and we'll crank that up again. We have this range low and range high. And if we take a look across the bottom, there is a black line and across this one, there is a white line. And so if I move this parameter here, we can see that we're moving this particular control and its area of effect. And the same way if we move the high range, its area of effect, right? Now, the uh, wheels still don't intersect, but we can move that range as we see fit or as we need, right? So those were the two wheels that have been in DaVinci Resolve pretty much forever. But recently, I would say about a year and a half, maybe two years now, 
uh, there is a new set of wheels. And this set of wheels, a lot of people get confused by the name and think that they can't use it on their footage. It's referred to as the HDR wheels. Now you can use this on standard uh, dynamic range footage, or you can use it in HDR footage. But let me quickly go over to it. So we'll reset this one and we have it up here, right? So the high dynamic range color wheels are slightly different because we can one, create as many wheels as we want, and two, set the range in which that wheel controls as well as its fall off. So we can change wh how, how much fall off there is going into other ranges and we can have multiple wheels in a same general area if we want to. And we can break it up into as many wheels as we want. So we have a ton of flexibility here. So let me quickly show you. Uh, across the top here are the default wheels, obviously. And we can see we have dark shadows highlights, but if I bring it over to the left, we also have black. So that's going to be like the bottom of the bottom. If we go over to the other side, we have specular highlights and light, right? So think of the specular is typically if we have a light in someone's eyes, that really bright dot is going to be typically specular. So it's going to be on the really high end. Typically, it's just pure white. There's no uh, color values really in there. And then, you know, working down into different areas. So let's come over here and let's work with, let's say, the shadows. So the shadows are going to be obviously on the lower end. We can see them down here. And we can see that it, the characteristics of that is a little bit different than when we were working with the previous wheels and we had like that mid-tones area. And so now I talked about that, but we can see that we don't have like a control up here or over here. We actually come over to the second page and the second page is where we have the ability to change the fall off and the, the size of the range as well as where the range uh, uh, where the range area is. So we were just working with the shadows bar and that's the one that's currently active. And if we move this, we can see that we're moving the image and where it controls. So that is going to be that particular wheel and where it controls, right? We typically wouldn't be over here adjusting these. We're just, we would set all of these up and then go over to the other page and then start to manipulate them. We also have the ability for fall off. If we want the fall off to be uh, you know, over a longer period of time, it kind of makes sense. And then over here, we have the ability to create more zones if we did want to make a custom zone, um, depending on our project. Now, if you're just starting out with color wheels, obviously that is going to be way too much information. I would say stay away from the high dynamic range wheels. And the reason being is because there's a lot of different parameters going on there. And if you look at, you know, projects that have been over you know the last couple decades that were just working with primary wheels and log wheels those projects look amazing so you can get stellar uh, results without all of the complexity I just wanted to show you because this is kind of just showing all of the color wheels and how they work because if you're working on a project and there's something that isn't working and you could just jump over to the color wheels, make your own ranges, and then you know manipulate it accordingly. So I think that kind of concludes everything that I wanted to go over the three different sets of color wheels. There are a lot of abilities there, and all th all three sets of color wheels are available in both versions of DaVinci Resolve Studio and the free version. So there is a lot of flexibility here. There is a lot of possibility here. Uh, but yeah, that's color wheels in a nutshell, the little overview on how the tools work, the overlapping versus not having any overlapping. And if you actually wanted to work with the high dynamic ranges and you didn't want overlapping, you could do that and not have like the fall off or you could separate them, uh, accordingly. Oh, one thing that I didn't say is typically, so like the shadows have the fall off going darker, right? Or excuse me, going lighter, but uh, we can also, as you can see, we have these going the other way as well. So if I create a new one, it's going to say, do you want it to be a dark zone or do you want it to be a light zone? And that just kind of uh, determines which way the fall off uh, happens, right? So I guess that was something that I didn't really explain. So yeah, that was that. I think I've covered everything now. If you wanna know more about DaVinci Resolve, I have a whole website dedicated to everything DaVinci Resolve. I have a bunch of courses there. If you wanna learn every aspect of DaVinci Resolve, potentially even get your certification through Blackmagic, you can do all that on my website. I have a bunch of pre-made assets there. So titles, transitions, you know, slideshows, all that jazz, and free titles if that's something that you're interested 
interested as well. Links in the description for all of that. But with that being said, my name's Jared. Thanks so much for watching. Till the next one, guys. Have a good one. Peace.